So the question is, please narrate the history of Bancor, including successes and failures, if they agree that Bancor has temporarily lagged behind compared to its peers, i.e. measured by TVL, total value lot. Explain why and how that happened from their perspective. Yeah, so this is a great question and uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad I was asked. Bancor made uh, a very key design decision early on in its existence. Now, so Bancor started in June, 2017 and it's been around quite a while, right? So that key design decision that was made was to put BNT as its protocol token in every one of its pairs. So every one of its pools has the ERC20 token and BNT. And so this was a decision that in the short term introduced some more user friction, but we believe over the long term is really a, a key design decision that will, is offering currently more long-term benefits to liquidity providers. And, and let me break that down. So in the early days of Bancor and AMMs, like we've said, you had to provide two tokens in order to be a liquidity provider. And so if I wanted to be a part of the link pool in sort of the initial model of Bancor, I had to provide an equal value of link and an equal value of BNT in order to be a liquidity provider. And so what Uniswap came along and did is it, like I said, ripped out BNT and put ETH in the pool. So I could provide liquidity and I can provide liquidity to Uniswap with half link and half ETH. And, you know, more users obviously have ETH in their wallet than they do BNT in their wallet. So to go to someone and say, hey, I know you want to provide liquidity and earn yield on your tokens and be a part of the network, but you have to acquire BNT first and then do it in equal and provide, you know, that's kind of a, a more of a headache for someone who already has ETH in their wallet, most likely, and can just provide half ETH and half link to the pool. So this really, you know, this reduction in sort of user friction um, really gave Uniswap um, massive traction. Um, we saw a total explosion uh, in Uniswap, let's say, you know, towards the end of 2019 and into 2020, to the point where Uniswap is eclipsing at certain times, even Coinbase in volume. And it was just this tiny sort of change, you know, in, in the structure of Bancor to put in ETH instead of BNT. Now, something that is really starting to get noticed by a lot of liquidity providers is they enter the pool expecting to generate you know this high apy off of let's say swap fees or off of um yield farming rewards but when they pull out their tokens at the end of the day they find that they can actually be worth less than if they had just held them in their in their wallet and actually you know this issue in in i'd say recent weeks and the past month has become even more noticeable with the eth bull run right as eth has gone up in price a lot of uniswap lps have been getting totally wrecked if you look at say like the wi-fi pool the link pool you know a lot of pools where you, you think as a liquidity provider you're getting drawn in because of this high APY, but once of the when those token moon when one of the token moons arbitragers just swoop in, um, extract value from the pools and LP you're just less left holding less. So actually we've seen this massive transfer of wealth from LPs who think they're making money to sophisticated arbs, sophisticated traders who actually are, are really the ones who are making money. So when I say that there's this short term um, or, or this kind of short-term benefit of having ETH, that's exactly it. Um, by having BNT as the common uh, token in every pool, Bancor can really manage liquidity in each one of its pools in order to provide this impermanent loss insurance and also to allow uh, LP to not be exposed to any other tokens in the pool to only be exposed to one token. 
This is something that you couldn't do with ETH as the reserve asset. You can't control the supply of ETH as a decentralized protocol. Uh, you can't allow single token exposure um, if you have ETH as your, as your token. So this really gets to the heart of the, the sort of debate over the value of having a protocol token. And I think BNT is really a textbook use case um, of why you need such a protocol token to really allow the protocol to manage the risk and diversify the risk of impermanent loss such that it's not a single LP that's playing Russian roulette with their tokens, but it's a protocol that's really managing that risk and, uh, and, and really reaping both the, and reaping the rewards too of impermanent loss insurance through the fees it earns. And those fees are burned to reduce the supply of BNT. Um, so that's really a long winded uh, way of saying there was a, a short term change made by Uniswap that gave it a very big head start. And with V2.1, we've truly flipped it on its head. And the value of having a protocol token like BNT in the pools is really starting to shine. And so we're up to around 100 million in liquidity locked. I think Uniswap is now at something like 1.5 billion, but we think that liquidity is going to flow to Bancor pretty fast as more LPs realize that there's a huge risk of losing money on Uniswap. And this risk does no longer exist uh, as an LP on Bancor. All right, that's great. Uh, thank you, Nate. 